Minister of Communications, Innovation and Digital Economy Bosun Tijani says Nigeria seeks to expand its broadband infrastructure with $2 billion investment. Information and Communication Technology ICT is the major sector with a double-digit growth contribution to the Nigerian economy. A Q4 2023 GDP figure was 18.6%. Now, technology experts believe the NICOM SAT infrastructure should be tapped into as a backup for the digital infrastructure. They highlight the point that satellite technology is critical for the future of the digital economy and serves as an alternative to the undersea cable. My guest is the CEO of Marbella Media and the convener of TechSwitch 2024, Inans Isa, joins me now to look at these critical issues. Many thanks for joining me on Business Insights. Yeah, it's a pleasure to be on Plus TV again, Justin. All right, it is indeed a pleasure to have you. So let's just go through what has happened uh, since on Thursday. Most Nigerians, uh, uh, well, the comfort of their homes, they noticed that they could not uh, really uh, connect uh, uh, via the internet. Uh, most banks' apps were not working. It was as though some part of West Africa or the country has been disconnected. I just want you to explain to us how that really happened and, of course, uh, what the cost had been uh, over the past days that this happened. Okay. Um, what really happened to the undersea sub cables, I will target an accident, which, is, which has been a collateral damage to the African uh, economy and also community in terms of um, um, the internet and also uh, the broadband services. You know, a lot of Africans have depend so much on that broadband internet, which has been a high rise to productivity. Mm. Africa depends 70% on internet consumption. Mm. We have the largest volume across the whole world. Mm. So it has been a very huge traffic. And I believe there's been a progress. But what has happened, really, we just have to look Ill a step forward mm. that this thing should not happen again. I mm. want to say these are things that the GLOW network have foreseen in laying down the submarine cables, mm. which you see that has not been a problem which has affected GLOW. Mm. But that has not been an alternative route mm. in terms of using the submarine. It has its own challenges, okay. major challenges in the deep sea. Okay. So I would advise that um, alternative routes should be suggested. Mm. Speaking of alternative routes being suggested, yeah, in passing you mentioned um, GLOW and the satellite communication. We, we thought um, by now should have been able to uh, you know, harness uh, the technology of satellite. We have NICOM Sat 1 and the other one, but with all of the satellites, is it, is it that they are no longer in the orbit or that we are not making much uh, use of it or that uh, what exactly are the issues really? All right. Every device is or um, every establishment of network has their own challenges. Mm. Maybe the satellite has been so cost effective because okay. satellite has been the first generation of the digital system mm. which brought about the revolution in the digital economy. Mm. And people are deviating from it, looking at a high speed broadband. Okay. And when you trend, when you lay in a cable, it goes faster than the okay. network due to weather or so. That's why uh, when you look at how internet came into Africa, we start with the mass, which is the line of sight from pole to pole. And gradually, the population and the traffic begin to grow. So we believe that in going to the high-speed internet, we need the submarine cables, mm. the fiber optic cables that could deliver a fast digital experience to mm. us. So that's why many companies who have seen those ideas and tested it and seen that it's so trusted. Mm. But for now, we've foreseen the different circumstances towards that an aspect, which I believe the first instance, which is the satellite network, mm. has been the best. Okay. The best and the only best. Okay, but looking at this now, you know, since on Thursday until now, although some, of, like I read in my intro, some telcos and some, you know, banks have rerouted their internet connectivity to the other one because over time it's been main one, you know, that um, have been in the business and that most people connect to, you know. So, uh, are there or that, I know you've, we've talked about um, the satellite, but um, how uh, effective is this or is it to get uh, other players to be involved in this um, undersea cable since you said it is really uh, active and then um, how often can we uh, are we likely to see incidents of um, this um, courts happening over time um, we will continue to experience it as far as it's a device mm. it will fail one way or the other mm. there are, that's why we say there are unforeseen circumstances the weather within the deep sea might change 
Mm. It might be a result of the sea creatures. Okay. Okay? Attacking the cables. It might be a result of that. But what I'm trying to say, why people navigate to a particular network, it's because of the benefits they enjoy, the mm. security they enjoy, the mm. reliability they enjoy. If this particular incident had not happened, then the main one cable would have been the best. Mm. People never see the glue the fiber optic cable within mm. the deep sea as an alternative road. Mm. But now people are reconnecting, mm. renavigating into that particular, which we're going to experience a high traffic. Mm. And it, it might be a slow of internet, mm. it might be something else that may erupt from the data center. Okay, so as it is right now, it's as though main one, and I'm not as much as I, I don't want to talk them out of business, uh, is actually the main player as it is right now. How uh, how costly is it to have like um, major players, you know, uh, getting involved in this um, uh, undersea cable, so that uh, at the end of the day there may be some sort of uh, competition and um, I don't know have um, alternatives as it were. Um, I'm not. I'm not really telling you how much. <laughs> no, in terms, of, I'm not, not specifically in terms of cost. Is it something that really uh, costs uh, so much that I would, I would uh, have need uh, several uh, platforms to come together, you know, to get it done, or, or how exactly? I'm not really. Um, what I would like to say it's um, it depends on the investors. If you're interested, mm. if you're really interested in investing in playing a major role, it's it's welcome. But what I'm trying to, the picture I'm trying to paint to you now, it depends on the benefit where the in each and every investor is getting. Mm. So from the main one, the main, you can see the main one went into an agreement with the Atlantic Cable uh, um, Management yes. Agreement, which has, they have a work efforts module. Mm. And it's, it, they, they gave us a space of five weeks. Mm. In the next, in the, just two weeks behind, mm. the cables have already been fixed up to 50%. Mm. So we're likely saying maybe in the next one or two weeks it will be fixed because it has been a rapid uh, um, a walk mm. over the deep sea. Okay. So, so as it is right now, still t talking about um, the fate and the future of internet connectivity, what should Nigeria be doing to to ensure that uh, we stand as a hub in Africa in terms of connectivity, in terms of um, service providers and all of that. Okay, what I really want to say is that all the conferences, all the seminars and all the workshops that we have been attending, that we have been hosting, this is the right time to put those knowledge, understanding experience into a productivity. If we didn't do that, I would target intellectual genocide. What do you mean by that? Intellectual design is all the ideas that we have, mm. calculated ideas, which are profitable to establish a quality infrastructure to make Nigeria a better and the giant of Africa. Mm -hmm. If we don't put it into play, then we are going nowhere. Policies, the government so much depends on political and so many partisan politics, which is not helping us to grow. Mm. Like I said, the NICOM SAT-1 R replacement mm. is the best alternative option right now for the whole of sub Africa and sub uh, 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 um, Sub-Saharan Africa. So what is really stopping uh, us as a people, us as a government, you know, from actually getting the most of this NICOM SAT-R1? Number one is commercializing it. Mm. Number two, allow the private sector to become a player in terms of security and encrypted data. Because the NICOM SAT-R comprises of the broadcasting, um, broadband, transpondent, and navigation. Mm. It's a business, a very huge business. But government are not looking to the business aspect. That's the major challenge we have. We have forgotten that we have a satellite. Mm. Not until this particular problem has erupted. Mm. How many youths have we trained to take over the satellite? Do we have a data center that we can take hold of this satellite? Those are things we should really look into. And we should give the youth a chance to play. Because this hard time, I said, skills play its roles. Okay, so invariably you're saying that um, the government is not actively, you know, uh, prepared or taking or uh, bringing hands on uh, technology or personnel to ensure that uh, we make the most of um, this um, digital technology that Nigeria Start uh, has to. Of course, to the government is not prepared. Okay. You see, the government is not prepared. What, when you look at it in a clear picture, the internet is the market. Mm. The internet is the office. The internet holds the health sector. The internet holds the e-commerce. The internet holds the fintech. Everything revolves around the internet. And even the government depends on the internet. But 
when one of things erupts, the government wants to ban the use of internet, and you also using the internet. Mm. So the NICOMs that are it's specifically designed to provide a high broadband service in broadcasting and internet services, mm. and also enhance security. So if you want to do this, there is a section of that uh, 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 NICOM that are that you have to lease out to the private sector to take hold. It's not just a one-man tax. Mm. The government cannot hold everything. Mm. When you release that, it's all about privatizing that particular sector. Okay, I, I, I question just popped um, to my head right now. You know, if government is actually uh, slow pedaling in ensuring that uh, we make the most of um, satellite technology, you know, is there not an opportunity for private sector on their own to actually put their own satellite out there in the orbit? Yes, yeah, that's an opportunity. And I believe or if the private sector were able to do a lot of paperwork and see the need to own their own private satellite, it's going to be a very huge mm. uh, and benefit. And you can see, let me just go back a little. Yeah, um, the past telecom uh, uh, sector that just left Nigeria, where it was acquired by Nine Mobile, they worked on satellites. They have never had any issues. It is a lot, never had any issues on, on sites, mass on site, nor uh, the fiber optic cable. The satellite is pinpoint directly to their coverage area. That is the benefit. That is a huge traffic and security. It's also a larger market for them to, to focus on Africa. So if the private sector will look into this initi initiative and let them own their own private satellites, it will go a long way. All right. Okay, it's still uh, Business Insight and Plus TV Africa. We still have um, Inans Isa with us. So we are looking at the undersea uh, uh, cable cord that um, disrupted internet connectivity in the past few days. But uh, something new is coming to Africa. We'll just uh, talk about it um, in the next two minutes as we round off um, in a moment. Do join us again. Hello, welcome back. It's still Business Insight and Plus TV Africa, where I still have the CEO of Marbella Media and convener of TechSwitch, Nance Isa. As we round off the show now, we're still looking at ICT. TechSwitch 2024, there's a TechSwitch 2023. Uh, the whole idea was to bring um, African key players uh, on one um, arena to just uh, bring make Africa the focus of um, you know, technology in Africa. So what do we expect uh, for this year, 2024? All right, next week, 2024, the team is financing African technology, the gateway for social economic transformation. Mm. This particular event, edition for this year, we're expecting to fund uh, African ideas, African innovation, African creativity. We need to bring them to the limelight where we can support them with SIM fund and also connect them to um, investors in the tech sector. Mm. And next, also, we are looking at uh, launching uh, a, a tech factory, which mm. we call the Emporium. Mm. We have been in partnership with uh, a tech hub in Ghana, mm. Eric Electronic, okay. which developed PC board. So, uh, with tech with this year, we're trying to replicate it across all Africa. Okay, so as uh, the time approaches, uh, Plus TV will bring you details, and of course, uh, I'm sure um, TechSwitch will be doing business with us as uh, we go further in the year. Thank you so much, um, Inans Isa, for um, you know all of the useful insight that you have brought on this issue of uh, undersea court, and uh, we can't uh, talk about it enough. The need for us to just create home homegrown solutions to actually meet okay. our needs and we have the technology i'm sure we have also the manpower to get that work right yes yes mm. we'll have the manpower we'll have the market okay and we'll have the knowledge and the capacity building initiatives to move all right that's the size of the show for today my name is justin academia many thanks for being a part of the show i'll see you again next time bye for now <laughs>